What is up guys? Welcome back to Kit Guru. Today we are kicking off another one of our special custom build projects. There's going to be some mods to the case as well. So you're probably wondering by now where is the graphics card for this build? Well, here it is. This is the ROG Strix RTX 3080. Um, we originally planned to use a 3070 in this build. We thought it would suit the i5 11600K better than a 3080. It would be more like the kind of GPU that you would pair with that CPU but like you guys are probably suffering with during this GPU shortage we're also struggling to get new samples of the RTX 30 series card uh, so we've actually picked up this in an already used condition this actually came to us from another media outlet with this Corsair XG7 water block installed and for this video I needed to have this card built back up with the stock cooler on just to show you guys what card we've got and to just run through the process of removing that and installing this XG7 card but the guys that this came from they're apparently novices with water cooling so the card came in a bit of a sorry state and we've got all the parts of the stock cooler but what they've done is they've removed all the thermal pads and just tossed them away somewhere so we don't have any of the stock thermal pads uh, also the screws were missing as well all the screws except for the four that just hold the the x clamp to the gpu die that was there but the rest of the screws for the stock cooler were missing we've managed to track those down um and i thought with so many people having to probably look at second hand or used markets this could be potentially an issue somebody could face uh, there could no doubt be a lot of people water cooling these cars especially if they're using them for mining or or whatever so it's potential that you could end up going out to i don't know pick up a car that you bought off ebay or facebook marketplace or something like that it comes with a water block installed and a stock cooler but you're not you don't have any of the stock thermal pads it's quite tricky actually to find a good diagram or a good image or any kind of tear down video especially of this card so it's not very easy to to find out the thickness of the thermal pads you need for the vram and for the mosfets and obviously for the backplate as well because these 30 series cards have a lot of passive cooling on the backplate so I thought it'd be a good idea to just do a bit of this video showing you how to kind of reverse engineer the uh, the thermal pad locations and thicknesses as well. So I've come up with a bit of an idea how we can do it because I still haven't worked out what thickness thermal pads I need for the VRAM, for the MOSFET and on the back of the card as well. So my idea is now that we've got the screws and fixings, this was the X clamp I call it that came originally with the card but then everything else just came in a bag like that so i've not seen this card myself i've not you know stripped one down or taken one apart so now i'm just left with a bunch of different size screws there's probably four or five different length or different thread screws some are spring loaded some are like torx heads with just like a self-tapping thread on and then the others are they look like m2 or m2.5 threaded screws and some of these have torx heads and some of them have a normal phillips head so whenever i'm taking a stock cooler off to install a water block what i'd normally do to just make sure that i kind of remember where the screws go i, I tend to put them back in where they came from so i'm just taking a guess now like this one see if it had come out of here just loosely thread it back in and then i'd store all the parts with the screws in somewhere safe just in case i wanted to revert back to the air cooler in the future but i didn't take this card apart so it's like a big jigsaw puzzle putting it back together so what i've done is i've just sorted the screws out into the different piles of the different types of screws and different lengths that we've got. The six of these self-tapping screws with Torx heads, I think I've already worked out where these are from because these have got like a silver head on them. And if you look on this fan shroud, the six screws missing from here, these didn't need to be taken out to remove the stock cooler. But because these are 
self-tapping screws and uh, threading into plastic, I'm pretty sure that's where they go. But we've also got four more screws with Torx heads that are silver, but these are actually a very fine thread. We've also got another set of screws with the same size thread and it looks like the same length just about, but they're a Phillips screw. And then there's three countersunk Phillips screws with a larger thread on, and then two countersunk Phillips screws with a, a thread size in between those two. And then there's two spring-loaded screws. Uh, they're a Phillips head as well, and they're probably an M2 thread. I have actually had a look at some footage on video cards of uh, a video by De Bauer. I think before this card was actually released, he actually managed to get his hands on one and strip one down. So I've got a bit of an idea how it goes back together. So the first thing is to put on this frame. This frame also acts as a heatsink for the VRM at the front here. So I do need to work out the thickness of the thermal pad for that, but it looks quite thin. That one maybe 1.5 mil or something, but I'll figure out how to do that in a moment. So we need that frame and we also need the back plate as well. The back plate goes on at the same time as this frame. So looking at this back plate, there's an area with four screws that is in like a, a silver frame, very similar to the, the fan shroud on the top. So the wild guess would be that these torque screws go in there and then they go all the way through and hold that, that frame in position. I think my torque driver, I think we'll just put those in there temporarily. So they look like they're in the right spot there. So because of that, I'm thinking that the Phillips head screws with the same thread are likely to go through the back plate and into this frame as well. So I'll put those in there. So all those screws are in and tightened up. I'm pretty confident they're in the right spot. So what we'll do now is drop the heat sink on dry. So we don't need any thermal compound on for this. It actually locates on the back of the card. Just temporarily screw this X clamp in. So the only screws left on the back plate are these two here and then two at the top. These two at the top, I'm pretty sure are for this GeForce RTX logo. So looking at it, these are countersunk, yep, the two countersunk longer screws that we had. Looks like they go in there. And then the only other two on the back plate are these two back here. There's only two of these spring loaded screws. So try those in there. I'm pretty sure that they're good. They are screwing in. So they look like they're the correct screws for there as well. So the only ones we've got missing now are the ones on the IO shield and we've got three left of these countersunk screws. So again, I'm pretty sure that these are the ones for this. And they look like they match the other ones that were left in. So, yep. So like I said at the beginning, all we're left with now is six of these with the silver Torx heads. Uh, these self-tapping ones and it's obvious now that these are for this fan shroud so these can go back in and these will stay in because they don't actually need to come out to, to, to dismantle the card. So we'll just screw those back in. That's the card back together. The, it wasn't as difficult as I expected actually. Luckily there wasn't too many different screws and it was pretty obvious where all the different types of screws went. So that's not taken as long as I expected. Uh, but now we need to figure out obviously the thickness of the stock thermal pad. So what I've done is I've just had a look at some images online and it looks like on the front side of the card, uh, the areas that will have thermal pads on will be the MOSFET, the inductors and the VRAM. And then the back plate offers some passive cooling as well. So on the back plate, we also need to find the thickness of the pads for the VRAM, the VRM capacitors, and the VRM MOSFET. To do that, I think the best way will be to try and use some of these feeler gauges. These are just basically strips of metal. They're really cheap to buy these as well. I imagine you'll get 
a set of these feeler gauges for less than £10 or $10. So they're very inexpensive. I don't use them that often. I do a lot of work on cars as well, so that's why I have these. It used to uh, set uh, tap it and valve clearances using these feeler gauges, but I don't tend to do that that often these days because you know, hydraulic lifters and everything like that, but I'll not get into that. What these are is they're just basically strips of metal, different thicknesses ranging from 0.8 millimeter to 0.1 millimeter. So that one is really thin. What you can do if you need different sizes that these don't cover, you could say put a 0.8 and a 0.2 together to get one millimeter, or you could put together a 0.5 and a 0.2 to get 0.7. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and use these on here. So if you look down the front edge of the card, you can actually see the gap between the cooler and the different components that we need to find out the uh, thickness of the thermal pads for. So looking down that edge of the cooler, you can see there's quite a big gap between the VRAM and the cooler that touches the VRAM. So I'm gonna start off with 0.8, 0.7 uh, and 0.5 if I can find it. So that should give us technically a two mil thick thermal pad. So, so that's very close. Let's see if we can make 1.5 mil. So a 0.7, 0.8. That should make a 1.5 mil pad. See, if you put the feel the blade down In between that you can see that that goes in between the cooler and the VRAM so it's obviously thicker than 0.5 but then when I put 2 mil in 2 mil is is tight but it's very close so I'd say for the VRAM on the front side of the card we're going to want 2 mil thermal pads the VRM MOSFET is towards the back here and there's also some under that strengthening plate. We'll start off, that looks a little closer than the VRAM. So we'll start off with one mil, see if it's one mil. Use a 0.7 and a 0.3 feeler gauge. And it's right down here at the edge. One mil goes in quite easily. So let's see what 1.5 does. 1.5 again. That looks tight, but very close. So VRM MOSFET. We'll try a 1.5 mil thermal pad first. When you put the thermal pads on and then put the screws in for the heat sink, it will compress the pads a little. So they're always a little bit big to begin with and then they compress down when you put the cooler on. The only other thing really now is the, or on the front of the card, is the inductor for the VRM. And that looks like a, quite a huge gap actually. So I'm gonna start off at two mil, so 0.7, 0.8, and 0.5 feeler gauge. And that goes in between there, and there's a bit of a gap as well there, so to get 2.5, just gonna stick with the ones I already had, plus a 0.2 and a 0.3. Try and hold those tight and put them down. That looks close, very close to going in. So yeah, I'd say 2.5 mil for the inductors on the front of the card. So we'll try 2.5 mil pads on there. So now it's the back plate and just need to take this off. And see if we can actually see down the back plate. So I have a feeling we might have to do this slightly different. So with the back plate removed, we can see that the majority of the thermal pads that will be going on the back of this card will actually be contacting with the PCB and just removing some residual heat that is generated by components on the front of the card. The method of working out the thickness of these pads on this 3080 is the same as the method for working out the pads on a 3090, but the only difference is on the back of a 3090 around the GPU die, you will have some VRAM chips on the back of the card. So that means the thickness of the pads between the 3080 and 3090 will be slightly different 
although the method of working them out is the same. So the method that I'm going to use to work these out will involve using a digital vernier caliper. And what I want to do first is just close it up, set it to zero, then just measure the thickness of the back plate from the front to the standoff, which is 4.2 millimeters. And then I also want to work out the thickness of the back plate itself, which is 1.75. So the reason I took those two measurements is to work out the difference in height between the face of the back of this back plate and the face of the standoff that contacts with the PCB. So if I just do 4.2 minus 1.75, that is 2.45 millimeters. Just make sure that measurement is correct by using these feeler gauges, just make up 2.5 mil thickness. If you just run your finger or maybe put a steel rule across there, you can feel that the standoff is in line with that 2.5 mil feeler gauge. So what that means is the distance from the PCB to the face of the back plate is more or less 2.5 millimeters. So any thermal pads that contact directly with the back of the PCB, they'll want to be 2.5 mil thick. So the VRAM is 2.5 millimeters and the VRM MOSFET that is also 2.5 millimeters. So now all we need to work out really is the height of these capacitors. So if we we'll start off at 1.5 mil, that is just a touch too low. Add a 0.5 on to make the thickness up to two mil. Two mil looks pretty much like it's the bang on right size. So what we're saying is the VRM capacitors on the back of the board, they stand up two mil proud of the PCB. If we just take off two mil off of the 2.5 mil uh, difference we had earlier, I'd say that these need to be either 0.5 or a push one mil pads. I think 0.5 will be all right because I don't think they really need that much cooling anyway. So now that we've got our list of thermal pads, or at least we think we have, uh, we need to take the card apart completely again, uh, cut some thermal pads to size, and then see if they fit correctly. Okay, so I've got the card all fully reassembled. What I've done is it's kind of a dry run, so there's no thermal compound on the GPU die. All I've done is cut all the thermal pads to size, put them in place, and then just reassembled the heat sink and reassembled the back plate. I did have to change the thickness of one of the pads, the one on the front VRM MOSFET. I had that down as 1.5 millimeters and that was just too thin. So I changed it to a two mil and looks like it's all right now. So if you're confident that you think everything's right and you think you've got all the correct size thermal pads, you could technically leave the card now and just use it as it is. Obviously you would have had to apply some thermal compound, but what I like to do 
is just to be 100% certain or just to double check that I have got all the thickness of the pads correctly. I like to, again, disassemble the card completely, take the heatsink and backplate off, and then you can check the thermal pads and you can use to see if there's any impressions of the memory modules and capacitors and whatever else. So that's what I'll do now. I'll just take all the screws out of the backplate, all the screws out of the heatsink, have a look at those pads. The card's fully dismantled again, uh, we've got the three main pieces laid out on the bench and you can quite clearly see on the back plate the VRM area that's making good contact with the thermal pad, you can see the impressions are really clear on there. Not quite as clear but you can see there are impressions around where the VRAM area is on the back of the card. Obviously there's no VRAM chips on the back of this 3080 but you can see it's making contact with the PCB and with the resistor, uh, the capacitors on the back of those chips and you can also see on the front VRM section again really clear impressions there. Then on the heatsink that goes on the front face of the card you can see again at the back where the VRM MOSFET is we've got quite clear impressions so we can see that contact's good there. The VRAM area the impressions aren't quite as clear but that is pretty typical of this arrangement. You usually don't notice the impressions as much in the VRAM because it's a, a larger, flatter surface area. But you can see there are some impressions in there, so we know that there is contact between the thermal pads and the VRAM chips. So I'm pretty happy with how that's gone. Now, if I was going to use this card with the stock air cool again, simply just reassemble everything, apply some thermal paste, and you'll be good to go. I'm not going to be doing that because I'm going to be fitting a water block, but I'm hoping that this has been helpful for someone else. I've not come across this problem before where I've bought a card used or second hand and it's had a water block fitted and all the bits have been lost like the thermal pads and screws misplaced. But I could imagine that it is something that could happen, especially in this day and age where we've got these GPU availability problems and I expect that soon enough there may be an influx of graphics cards on the second hand market when either new ones are released or if there's some kind of mining crash or or, or just a, an uplift in the production of cards. So hopefully this has been useful for someone. <laughs>